Hello and welcome to this lesson on energy systems, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at how you can understand and calculate the energy in different stores found in the universe. So if we have been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to describe what happens when work is done on an object, describe the energy changes in a closed system and calculate the work done or values associated with it in a system, which links into the following part of the AQA A level physics specification 3.4.1.8 conservation of energy. Now, energy is the ability for an object to do work, and the principle of the conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only be transferred from one form to another. So what this means is that the total amount of energy in a closed system remains constant, although how much of each form there is may change. So we can, as we said before, energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed from one store to another store, or transferred from one form to another form. So if, there is a re if this is caused by a resultant force acting on the object, we call this work done, as shown in the example before. So if a, a force causes a gravitational potential energy store to turn into a kinetic energy store, we say that work has been done. Now, in an isolated or closed system, this means an energy transformation has occurred when none of this energy is lost to the surroundings. However, if there's an open system, you will have some energy go to the internal energy of the surroundings because all transformations and transfers are not isolated. They exist in open systems. So as such, all of them will trans transfer energy to the internal energy of the surroundings due to resistance of forces. So we can use the transfer between energy forms to calculate values of an object, and this can be done by considering the properties of the energy type in each form. Now there are two types of energy forms, energy stores, where energy is stored in an object, and energy transfers, when energy is moved or causes movement. So when we consider energy stores, we can think of the elastic potential energy, the energy of a stretched elastic object, the gravitational potential energy, the energy of a massive object inside a gravitational field, the chemical energy, which is the energy contained in the chemical bonds of a substance, nuclear energy, the energy contained in the nucleus of an atom, and internal energy, the energy contained in the particles of a substance. While when we consider energy transfers, we have kinetic energy, the energy of movement. We also have sound, light, and electrical energy, which are ways in which energy can be transferred within a system. Now you can calculate how well energy is transferred in terms of efficiency. So efficiency is a measure of how much useful output there is in a system compared for the total input in the system. So we can calculate with the following equations. Efficiency is equal to the useful energy output divided by the total energy input or efficiency is the useful power output divided by the total power input. Now efficiency does not have any units, it's a numerical value or a percentage. So efficiency needs to be a value between 0 and 1 or 0% and 100%. This follows the conservation of energy that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Now, gravitational potential energy is due to the position of an object in a gravitational field. So if an object of mass m is lifted at a constant speed by a height of h, we can say that the acceleration is zero. Now, since f equals ma, we can therefore say the overall force is zero, which means the lift and force on the object is equal to the weight of the object. So if we know that the resultant force is equal to the weight, which is equal to mg, and we know that work done is force times by the displacement, we can then substitute that in to say that the work done is m times by g times by s, which is m times by g times by the height. So therefore, our um, gravitational potential energy store is equal to mass times by the gravitational field strength times by the change in height. So remember that delta h is the change in height of an object in a gravitational field. Now, this equation is only true when the change in height is much lower than the radius of the Earth. Otherwise, g, the value of the gravitational field strength, would vary and therefore invalidate the equation because we're considering it to be a constant. Now, GPE is gained when an object moves higher and is lost when an object moves lower. 
Now to clarify in terms of potential energy, potential energy is the energy an object has because of its position or shape. So potential energy is often hidden or stored in an object. So for example, an object's gravitational potential energy changes when it moves through a gravitational field. Now we can identify other forms of potential energy. An electrically charged object has electrical potential energy when it's placed in an electrical field. An object may have elastic potential energy when it is stretched, squashed or twisted and then if it's released it goes back to its original shape. Now another type of energy is kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is the energy a moving object has. The faster an object is moving, the greater is kinetic energy. So let us consider a car, for example, that accelerates from being stationary, where u equals zero, to travelling at a velocity v when a force f is applied. Now as we know from the equations of motion, we know that v equals u plus at. So therefore, if u equals 0, v equals at. So t is equal to v over a. Now we also know from the equations of motion, s equals a half u plus v times by t. Now again, u equals 0, so s equals a half vt. So we can then substitute in our previous value for t by saying s equals a half v times by v over a. So s equals a half v squared over a. Now the work done is force times by the displacement, so it's f equals ma, so ma times by s this displacement and then sub in the value for s we've just worked out which is a half v squared over a so therefore it equals a half mv squared which is our equation for the kinetic energy now this equation only works at classical velocities velocities much lower than the speed of light as when you approach the speed of light and um, the mass of the object increases in validating the equation now this equation indicates to us that the kinetic energy of an object is directly proportional to the mass for mass to mass for objects traveling at the same speed. It also applies that implies that the kinetic energy is directly proportional to the square of the velocity of given objects. Now, in a crash, a lot of kinetic energy is transferred in a short space of time. Now, car safety features are designed to transfer some of the energy into other forms. So this reduces the amount of energy transferred to car passengers and other road users, so to protect them. Now, resistive forces are forces that can act on a moving body in the opposite direction to the direction of movement. Now the main resistive force is friction which could also include drag or air resistance. Now when an object such as a roller coaster moves vertically without a driving force any difference in the gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy corresponds to a loss of energy to resistive forces or as we can also say the work done against resistive forces. So we can say that the work done against resistive forces is equal to the kinetic energy plus the gravitational potential energy where the kinetic energy is a positive and the gravitational potential energy is a negative. So fundamentally the difference in the two values is your work done against resistive forces. So to summarise what we've looked at in today's lesson, we've looked at the principle of conservation of energy, we've looked at the equation that gravitational potential energy equals mg triangle h, and e, uh, the kinetic energy ek is a half mv squared, and we've looked at quantitative and qualitative applications of energy conservation, including gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, and work done against resistive forces. So if we've been successful and we've learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to describe what happens when work is done on an object, describe the energy changes in a closed system, and calculate the work done or values associated with it in a system. So thank you for watching this lesson on energy systems, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQAA level physics. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.